morning. See that Land Rover out there? That is Elsa, my 1970 Series 2A. So when I first got the car, I found like 50 things that needed to be fixed, most of the minor. And uh, I had some major work done on it too at a garage. I had brakes, steering, clutch, you know, that kind of thing all redone. And um, then I started working on little things. And um, first thing I did was, well, the car had no mirrors on it. I guess if you're driving it in four wheel drive, who needs mirrors, right? If you just, uh, you know, out on rough tracks or green lanes, whatever. So um, to be least street legal, it needed mirrors. So I put two wing mirrors on it. And then I put an interior mirror on it. So, um, why don't you uh, watch the video and um, it's one of a series of videos I'm gonna go ahead and have breakfast and then I'll come back after that and uh, tell you a little bit more about the car catch you later Right now I'm going to install a wing mirror on my 1970 Series 2A Land Rover. And ultimately it's going to um, it's going to look like the one here on the other side. A rubber plug assembly was in there before. There's the wing mirror. And then you can always adjust the mirror based on this adjustment on the back. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll do, you have the nut, the washer underneath, the washer, the lock washer, and the nut. I'm just putting that under there. You have to do it by feeling it, which is not hard at all because you're reaching up under the fender and there's plenty of room. And you just tighten it like that. That's good. And I'm using a 9/16 deep socket wrench to tighten it up. And you don't want to make it too tight until you've driven and adjusted the mirrors, but you want to get it fairly tight. want to make it so if you need to turn it a little bit you can right and then um, you need a smaller socket wrench for that which I'm going to get I'm just using a little socket wrench for this and this can adjust it any way you like so that's what I'm going to do Tighten it up, and then I'll test drive it and make my adjustments and then tighten everything up. But that's it. So here are the wing mirrors on the car, which I'll show you from the front. And there's one. And there's two. And that's how it looks. Today I am installing a interior mirror in my 1970 Series 2A Land Rover, and basically you need uh, you, basically here's the mirror, and it's an aftermarket mirror. But it's very important that you also have the bracket. This is a special bracket for mounting the mirror, which costs as much as the mirror. So here's basically where it goes. There are bolts along the top of the roof, and these two bolts right here are, they take a 9 16 inch socket, and this special bracket will actually fit right on here, just like that, see? I'm just going to unscrew these. It 
it's a bolt, actually a bolt comes down and this is a special nut you can see you gotta order it I'm not sure what they call it that worked okay so there's the other one now we put the bracket right up against it fits there perfectly getting it on should be easier than turning it off I'm hoping it feels like it is yeah, it'll still need a little help and let's get the other screw another nut on here and I will tighten it later for the sake of the video I'm just going to leave it so you can see how the mirror goes on there now the mirror has doesn't come with the screws but I'm using I'm using a small screw that has a recessed well, a tapered head because the hole in this mirror is tapered with a lock washer and a nut Start it here, if possible, which would be nice. Yeah, a little bit. I get the other one started as well. And here's the other one: screw, lock washer, nut. I'm using a smaller screwdriver now because it's hard to get that big screwdriver in there. That's that one. And that's that one, which I will tighten up later. I'll tighten everything up, including that wayward screw here, bolt. And that's the mirror install in the series Land Rover. So here it is. So, how did I come up with the name Elsa for my Land Rover? Some of you may be thinking, well, Elsa, that's the lioness in the movie Born Free, the Joy Adamson story. That's true. But, actually, I used to live in a town called El Segundo, and that's where I had my first Land Rover. It was also a red 1971 Series 2A. It looked almost the same as this one. So when I saw this Land Rover for sale, I immediately bought it. I couldn't resist. I just was overcome with emotion. So um, what to name it? I thought of a few names. Big Red, too obvious. I like the name Rosinante, which is the name of Don Quixote's horse um, forced to go on missions that maybe were a little bit outrageous. So it seemed to fit, but I could have had that name, but no one would really know, know Rosinante, what that is. And then it occurred to me that the town I used to live in, which was um, right between Los Angeles and the beach, um, right near Los Angeles Airport, called El Segundo, that's where I had my first Land Rover. I said, well, why don't, why don't I name the, the car El Segundo, which is what I did. And it is the second Land Rover that I've owned. And in Spanish, the second means El Segundo. So I picked that name, and just coincidentally, a good nickname for El Segundo is Elsa. There you go. That's how I came up with the name. Anyway, a lot of things uh, need to be repaired or fixed or tweaked. You know how it is. And um, so this video was really just about putting mirrors on. Very simple thing. And uh, it's the first thing I did to get my feet wet in doing repairs on this car. 
and subsequent videos, as you're going to see, uh, will get a little more complex as I learn more about the vehicle and uh, dive into doing more and more of the maintenance because I'm committed to learning all things mechanical about maintaining and fixing my Land Rover. So I hope you liked the video and thanks for watching.